Hi, and welcome to Two Tired Teachers. And we are coming at you from just north, well, just out of Los Alamos, New Mexico. And you may be saying, why Los Alamos, New Mexico? <laughs> well, the only thing I really knew about Los Alamos before we came, one is it's in the mountains of New Mexico, which this is July of 2021, and we are attempting to escape the Texas heat. And so I knew the elevation here was uh, seven, 8,000 feet, something like that. And I knew about the Manhattan Project, which if you're completely unfamiliar, uh, that atomic bomb, is essentially what you think of with Los, with the Manhattan In Project. three places with the Manhattan Project. Uh, but this is the one that was closest to us. But what we found out when we got here is there are actually three, yes, count them, three, there's a B in front of the answer, there are, uh, three um, areas that fall under the National Park Service. Department of the Interior. And so we decided, by golly, we'll visit each of those. And then we're going to talk to you about this amazing uh, Santa Fe National Forest area that we are in uh, as well. But we're going to kind of take these in the order that we did them. And then I'll put a timestamp at the bottom if you're just interested in where we stayed sure. in the area. But the Manhattan Project. This one Sharon's going to have to take because... She did the research on it. She did everything about it. And uh, I really am not well versed. Well, I when I knew we were coming here, I'd seen that this was a place where we could escape some heat. Uh, I have been fascinated. Manhattan Project, uh, during World War II, uh, atomic weapons were... Uh, were being developed by by Russia. Germany was looking into getting some. And so it really was a matter of who's going to get there first. And the thing that amazed me about this as I started looking into it was the brain power that was concentrated in this area. I think the thing that amazed me was there was nobody here much. There was a boys... There was a boys camp, and the lodge, they came in and essentially took over. Yes, uh, and well, kicked everybody out. And they had one way up this mountain and one way down and checkpoints that you had to get through to get up the mountain. And, yes, and everyone that worked here was an engineer. That was their classification. <laughs> they were an engineer. Um, but what I did not realize before we came... There still is a Los Alamos laboratory that is still highly operational and still evidently highly classified because there's one place where uh, if you stay on Highway 501, you actually drive through the corner of it and there is a checkpoint and they can stop you and search your vehicles, your vehicle or vehicles if you're towing something. Uh, and there's no photography, there's no weapons, there's no uh, alcohol. alcohol. <laughs> Nothing can go through that little section you're driving that's maybe a mile. Yeah. I don't know. We drove it once. We asked the guy. We had parked. We asked the guy, can we pull an RV through here? He said no. That's not what we've read in the information. Yes. I think he just didn't want them coming through. But yeah. anyway, uh, we're going to show you how to bypass This that. road actually becomes trinity and to get up to american springs or around the lab there is a way to do it they've put in some circles so you kind of got to be uh searching for that but as you get down here keep going you get to the hospital this is the crucial part the lab is here and if you stay on highway one uh 501 they make you go through part of the uh lab and they may search you now that's not that big a deal except if you have an rv that could take part of your time so right here at the hospital this street is west street and you can see it turns and then it makes a sharp turn come down by the skating rink and yeah there's some switchbacks it was repaved recently and you can see here's a guard shack here's a guard shack and we have now bypassed them and we're on our way up the mountain 
but what was I was thrilled about was the historic section of Los Alamos is actually in town. And so the place that all of these amazing scientists were working, etc., you can go the boys lodge that had been taken over. You can go and actually walk through that and I'll show you some video of it. It's just amazing architecture, etc. And I found it interesting about bathtub row. The what what I learned before we came, what I heard before we came was um, many of these scientists had were uh, many of them were Jewish. No, Thea, she don't mind. Uh, were Jewish and they had been uh, they sought asylum in the United States, yes. attempting to get away from the Germans, and um, and just brilliant science. But they came here. The only bathtubs were for the staff for the boys camp that had been here. These other the other housing just ballooned, and it was not necessarily just uh, barracks, but modest housing for the majority of the people, the uh, army, the uh, and, and some of the lesser known scientists, etc. They were in just kind of less, and so it was a real uh, kind of a class thing if you had a bathtub instead of a shower. And so anyway, there's bathtub row. Um, there are museums all over town. You can go and see the history of the area before the Manhattan Project or the Manhattan Project. But it was very interesting, and uh, like we said, there's still active uh, part of the... And as you're driving through, you'll see on our GPS, it's green because it's the National Forest on one side and brown because uh, it's it's the Manhattan Project. It's military, essentially. And something I found uh, I want to let people know is about the Visitor Center, the National Park Visitor Center. It's closed on Tuesday and Wednesday and, now. Yeah, and this is uh, July of 2021. Not everything is open. But and um, they've just gone back in this area to requiring mask indoors. I have a feeling by the time we upload it, this, it's either going to yes. be everybody's wearing mask or nobody. So, but uh, as we were driving around and we had picked up some uh, information as we came into town, we saw this is actually the uh, jumping off place for three national parks. The next one we went to was Bandelier National Monument. We were actually looking for some dispersed camping, and we were right on top of this practically and decided to go. I was in flip-flops, and you were... There is a campground there, yes. though. And we'll go on and show you a little bit of that campground. But this is really a place for hiking. Yes. Uh, that is the majority of what you're going to be doing there. Uh, There's a cafe. They have... Uh, Buy some burgers, elk the, burgers, and wild boar burgers. The uh, the campground is up on kind of the plateau, and then there's an overlook, and you can see down uh, in the the valley where the visitor center and all of that stuff is located. But it really is a hiking area, and we had not come uh, prepared to go out hiking, but it was just what we saw. Uh, the the buildings all looked uh, yes dated. They they'd been there for a while, but it's a very interesting looking area. And if you're really into hiking or you want an actual camp spot, uh, yeah, that and, might be. It. But you're fairly short. Yes. Uh, but that would be a place. It's definitely uh, worth going down and checking out, especially if you have a park pass, so that it's free. Yes. One that we would not have given a second thought to. <laughs> Valles Caldera. While we were out just exploring the area, we drove past this, and it's just the overlook at it. Yes, it's a meadow. and This huge meadow. Yes. And we have found out that that was because it was a volcano. <laughs> and um, it is amazing. Uh it's what's a couple of miles into the yes. entrance area 
And as we were driving across there, we were seeing prairie dogs, which we were surprised. Where we've seen prairie dogs in Texas and even South Dakota, yes. uh, various, it's been like sandy and you see the little mounds. This is like forest floor. Yeah, it's a uh, <laughs> um, prairie grass and yes. and wildflowers. It was gorgeous. But then you'd see little prairie dogs sticking their heads up and stuff. And as we were driving in, I saw what I thought was a coyote up close. But I mean, he looked pretty big, but he goes up there fairly close. We didn't get a video of him. When we got into the visitor center, the guy saw we were teachers, he gave us a DVD, which thank you so much. Yes. Uh, very interesting hour long uh, DVD of the area. But you can drive into the back country. You yes. can drive 12 miles out. And it doesn't require four wheel drive. It's a washboard road, but it, you know, you take it 10, 15 miles an hour, and you're good. Some places you can get up to 17 miles an hour. And it's a gorgeous drive. Just the drive itself. We did see one young elk. Um, we don't know where his folks were, but we did see one. He may one. have been, like Sharon said, the time a yearling. I, I mean, think he probably was. I think they had probably booted him out. Uh, but there were some fenced off areas. And so when we came back, there's actually a visitor center once you've gone back into the backcountry area. There's a cabin area and then a visitor center. And by then we had driven the whole thing. We had a couple of questions. And uh, one of the questions was about the wildlife, what they had. And the ranger told us, well, the elk used to be here, but in about, by 1900, they'd been killed off in New Mexico. And so, I, in the 40s to 60s, Wyoming sent some elk to this part of New Mexico, and they have around 100 now. And the other thing he said was, everybody's always so amazed at their coyotes, <laughs> because they're so much bigger than most coyotes, and, coats. and the coats are longer hair and thicker, because... They've got their fill of prairie dogs. <laughs> so they uh, they have really large, and we got some video. He, they, he was way back by the time we got the video, but we did get some video of the uh, coyote that we saw on our way out. Um, and then while we were in the back country, there were areas that were fenced off, and we could not figure and there out. Was, I mean... In South Dakota, they do Roundup for the bison, but... Didn't think that would be real no. easy to do an elk, but we couldn't figure it out. So I asked the guy, what are the fenced off area? And he said, they are elk exclusive. Yes. They're there to keep the elk out. They're trying to get a grove of willows to grow, and the elk just think that's a delicacy. <laughs> and so they rope off areas yes. for... Uh, the plant life to have a chance to to sprout up and flourish. We will also tell you that um, if you have a New Mexico fishing license, you can fish mm -hmm. in the national park. You have to use barbless hooks, mm -hmm. um, but there are brown trout mainly is what he said. A limited two. two that you can keep. You can catch and release all you want. Uh, and we saw a guy that had been out there fly fishing, and he said he had just caught an 18-inch. Said there were some big uh, trout, but it was a real challenge to get. <laughs> but we were thrilled that we went to visit all of these. And last thing I want to say about the Manhattan Project, and that was I was thrilled that there was so much of it that was not in the lab section. Uh, yes. The historic section is kind of in the central part of the city and the lab is a huge area on the outside. Yes. I mean they they run parallel but the his, the historical part of the Manhattan Project and all of that you get to see but the Los Alamos lab you don't. Yes. But anyway so when we came we had uh, I had done some research before we got here. We are currently sitting at America Springs, dispersed camping in Santa Fe National Forest. When we first got here, we went to Main Gate Park. And it's just as you start into Los Alamos. We'd seen there was a free dump station there. Well, there was a free dump station, 
there was potable water, and that's the one we chose. We weren't <laughs> we weren't positive at the time, but uh, there is a ten dollar fee if you were going to camp there. Folks using their dump station, filling our tank and some water jug. The ten dollars was well worth it. But the main reason we made that decision was because the day we pulled in. As we were pulling in, it was sunshiny in Los Alamos, but the mountains, it was dark gray and yes. thunder and lightning. We could hear the thunder and lightning from where we were emptying our I, tanks. I only heard the thunder, but hey. I heard the lightning. Hey, yes. But we, um, we made a decision of, I don't want to go up yes. there when we don't know where no. we're staying. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're not staying in a campground. We're not sure what we're going to be finding. And so we came up we, here. We, we stayed there. We unhitched. We read the directions. We follow rules. We went to the aquatic center. Don't ask me why. Uh, we are going to be sending an email letting them know if they would put an honor box. I think they would do better. Uh, but we went to the aquatic center, got our pass that we could display in our window um and then that afternoon is when we went to bandolier and we came up and we're looking for areas to uh camp here we have seen uh class c yes there's a probably about a 30 foot travel trailer back over here and the guy who wrote the review about this place said he had 36 foot travel trailer no problems L let me just say these <laughs> roads wash out some yes when you turn in turn right if you're coming to camp here this road that goes straight is actually four miles uh, some people who live here hike this road a lot yes. and there's one campsite that's just down here uh down the road we are actually kind of staying right off of the main hub we got yes. out of the way uh we'll show you that to you but once you pass this one little campsite, you've got a really rough road yes. for a long way. Theo and I walked a mile and a half or so down there, mile and a half back uh, yesterday, and it's at least a mile down there before there's a spot that you can pull over, and it's washed out um, for a camping area. We see people driving down there all the time. I say all the time. We've seen, what, four or five yes. uh, high-clearance trucks heading down there but when you pull in if you will turn to the right there are several sites that are all right up in there and most of those are fairly doable my suggestion would be and I know a lot of not do this but would be to pull in stop and then go look and see yes. those campsites are not that far yes uh, there are a couple of roads that head off here and you can go see kind of choose where you want to be but like I said, when we pulled in that one night, it was raining. So we unhitched, drove up here, looked around, uh, drove all the way out past um, the caldera and uh, decided this was our best choice. Yes, it was. From there the is a campground. Uh, it might be Redondo. Redondo, something. It's a National Forest campground that's on down there. But from where we're sitting approximately eight miles to the center of Los Alamos and eight miles to uh, the Valdera Candiras. Valles, Can this place. Valle, <laughs> Valle Caldera. Anyway, and so this is going to be our third night here. We are loving it. It is gorgeous. Uh, almost every afternoon you get a shower or so, but this has been an absolutely beautiful, free place to stay. Um, and when we leave here, we will stop back at that main gate yes. park and empty our tanks. When, our water, fresh water. When we went to the aquatic center to pay our $10 for staying there overnight, the one night we stayed there, I asked, is the water potable? <laughs> There's one handle that was purple yes, and one that was blue. I thought, blue is usually potable water. I've seen it in National Forest. Uh, campgrounds where blue is potable so I had used it and the the girl when I asked she said I don't think so <laughs> I don't think there's potable water I thought oh man we're gonna have to drain our tanks and well 
She said, let me look it up. And she actually looked it up and she said, yes, the blue handle, the blue spigot is potable water. So there you have it officially from the main gate park people. From the aquatic center <laughs> people. Uh, but like I said, I will write an email and suggest they put an honor box out there because when we stayed there, there were eight people that stayed in that and parking I, lot. I two, rather believe some of them two, did not. <laughs> two RVs. And I will say one guy did have an open frame generator. He ran quite a bit. Most of the night. Wish, wish he hadn't done that. But um, there were, what, two or three conversion yes. vans. And just And then cars some people just that, trucks. Yeah, camping out of their cars or trucks or whatever. But... I don't think all eight people made it to the aquatic center, and I think if they'd had an honor box, they might have gotten something. Yes. But anyway, um, we are loving it here, and um, the forecast, I took the picture uh, of their forecast. Forecast today, high is 76, and our friends were saying it's, you know, in the hundreds at home, so this is nice. We've been sleeping yes. with the windows open, uh, blankets. One, one friend replied to her email where she sent the forecast and Text. said how do you like your burgers because you can fry them on the sidewalks <laughs> here but anyway um los alamos may not be somewhere that you're thinking that there's that much to do i gotta tell you the locals here have been so friendly They're very friendly very friendly and they love their city and rightfully so and the visitor center uh is right next to the national park uh Visitor Center. Visitor Center. They they have tons of information and can help out a bunch. And so, whether it's history, just national park kind of stuff, or just escaping some heat, <laughs> um, this is a place to be. And um, was going to say, to come to this area, we had read one review about you have to go to White Rock. You don't. Um, I will show you. The guy that didn't want us to go through with an RV through the lab told us we could take West Street, and it's right across from the hospital, and it literally does bypass that one little section, uh, and yeah, there's some switchbacks, and you got some elevation changes and stuff, and I will say that if you do not want to tow on a steep grade, this is not the place, well, this whole place getting to Los Alamos might not be your, your favorite place to come but um, but you can come through Los Alamos without going through the lab uh, take West Street off of Trinity and it will wind you around and uh, then you can go to either Bandelier or here or on to this place <laughs> <laughs> anyway but anyway, I have been blown away by how much there yes. was to see and do in this area. And yet we've taken it real... Yesterday we didn't leave. We just stayed here <laughs> and read and had a great time. So, um, you know, if Los Alamos is not on your radar, maybe put it there because this has been really neat. And uh, we hope you've enjoyed our look at this area. As Th always, thanks, thanks for, for watching. watching. Two tired, tired teachers. teachers.